so I just got a call from a friend from a while ago and I know she meant well, but she started to bring up a sore subject and it catapulted into me getting pretty upset. And I let her know, I let her know that, Hey, I know you mean well, but probably shouldn't, um, go into this. And it started off innocent enough. The conversation, it was, uh, like, Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. And Hey, like, you know, I miss you. Like I haven't talked to you in a while. And we started talking about anime and cosplay and how much I miss it and how much I miss going to conventions and, and, you know, video gaming and all these things that I used to really love that I still love. I just haven't really gotten into it. And kind of what happens when you're a single mom, you're trying to make do. Um, sometimes things that you enjoy doing kind of fall by the wayside. I do hope to get the boys into it because they really love Halloween. They really love dressing up. They really love costumes. I think they would really enjoy the convention scene because that's, I feel alive when it comes to the convention scene. I love it. Um, but, uh, it started off innocent enough, but then, um, she mentioned that video. I, the, when couples argue and your name comes up, she said that I didn't watch it. But just by the title alone, I knew who you were talking about. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> thanks, I guess. I'm like already anticipating that she's going to say something that I do not want her to say. And then she asked, of course, the question that I was dreading. I was like, so have you talked to him since then? Like, you know, I thought you guys were, you were super close when you were, you know, back then, back in the day when you were like, you know, really close friends in the community college. I was like, yeah. Yeah, you remember what happened though, right? Like when he started dating his girlfriend and, you know, she argued with him about me, even though like it was pretty obvious over the years that it's, it, it was one-sided. My feelings for him were unrequited. Like there was no way he did feel that way that he never, ever said that he loved me or any of that kind of stuff. So that's like the basic of what happened in that video, what I talked about in that video. My frustrations that his girlfriend was treating me like a homewrecker when it's like, dude, I backed off. Like he never told anyone that he had a girlfriend and then you came out of the woodworks and then you got upset that I existed pretty much in his life. But you can't take away the fact that years before he ever met her, 10 years before he even met her, like he and I had had years of being very close friends. And yeah, I may have had romantic feelings for him before, but he never did for me. So, you know, it's, it seemed like no brainer for me at that, about that. But this friend that I was on the phone with, um, she kept pressuring, uh, pressuring me about like, kept pressing like, well, why aren't you talking to him? Like you guys were so close and uh, yeah, I know, I know like Bob, but it's been almost five years. And I'm like, Yeah. Um, uh, when I thought that something was going to happen with him, like I thought something bad might happen. I reached out like, Hey, are you okay? Like if you ever need a friend, you know, I'm, I'm definitely there because he was there for me when I was at one of my lowest points in life. Um, like when, when things were going on in 2016, when I lost my uncle, when I, was thinking about ideation when my ex-husband who I was married to at the time had taken out like it was a really bad time and and him uh the guy who I nicknamed the the letter n in the other one which is based off of a nickname not his real name uh mind you but uh n and a couple other friends reached out and they were really supportive and they were there for me like from afar they weren't physically there but you know, it's like they cared about what happened to me. And so when I thought something like that might happen to him, I reached out and I was like, I'm, I'm here as a friend. Like you ever need to talk? Like, I don't want anything bad to happen to you. I care about you as a person, you know, um, he may never return my feelings in the past. And I don't feel the same way about him that I did before. But I mean, like I care about him as a person. We were really close friends at one point, 
But other than that, I haven't reached out. And this friend asked me, like, why? Like, you guys were super close. Like, why? I was like, do you not realize that, yes, we were super close and there's a lot of memories between us, but that was over a decade ago. And remember, he's with someone. And remember, there's contention with her because she seemed to think that I was like a homewrecker, even though that wasn't the case. And my friend's like, yeah, but you miss talking to him, don't you? You miss talking to a lot of those friends. And I said, yeah, I, I do. I miss talking to a lot of people. There are some people that I've tried so many times over the years to get in touch with and they never wrote back or they just ghosted me that, you know, or they just, they say, oh, hi, yeah, ha ha, that was a fun joke or, oh, that was a fun meme or whatever. And then just wouldn't talk to me. And I just gave up thinking, well, obviously they hate me. Even when I asked them directly, did I do something wrong? And they wouldn't answer. So I just gave up. It's like, I'm not going to go where I'm not wanted, you know, um, because I'm not perfect. Maybe I did do something to upset someone, but I want at least the chance to apologize and make up for it or change my behavior or something. Like I want that chance. But if, if you don't tell me, I, I can't do anything. Right. But in this case, this friend just couldn't seem to understand. Like, I know she meant well. She's like, well, you should get in contact with people if you want to talk to them. I said, yeah, but I don't want to cause issues for him. Like, as far as I could tell from mutual friends, he seems really happy. He's been with her for like five years. So maybe she's the one, you know, because he once wrote about like, how he couldn't give me the same kind of affection or love or, you know, like he couldn't give me what I wanted back then. This was like 2008. So, I mean, this is a long time ago. Um, but it's, it's like 14 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but he wrote once that, you know, that he doesn't think that he'd ever meet the person, but he feels like his love would be reserved for the one that he didn't feel worthy of admiration alone. And, like that was a big thing to him. He wasn't really savvy on the whole subject of love or anything like that. And me, I was still trying to be, I was still trying to feel validated. I was still thinking that I needed someone's like obsessive affection or whatever to feel validated. Finding that I really am okay on my own now. Like I am settled. I'm happy. Like I'm not pursuing anyone. No one's pursuing me. I'm, I'm content where I'm at. Like I can love myself and be happy with myself. And I don't have to make excuses. Like if someone asks like, Oh, are you single? Like, yeah, I'm single. Like, Oh, okay. Like they treat it like it's a bad thing to me. I'm like, no, I'm enjoying it because I get to be me and I'm okay with that. I don't need someone in my life. Um, I don't, I don't have to depend on anyone. I'm a pretty self-sufficient person, but I still will shower people with love. I will still give myself completely to people because I don't believe in, in skimping out on that. I, I don't believe in reserving anything because time is short. You never know. And I've suffered so much pain. I just cannot help but want to give love because I don't want anyone to feel pain. And of course he, he saw it differently, uh, back then. And he, I think despaired a little bit that he would ever find anyone that could, you know, relate to him that way. But maybe she's the one, maybe she's the one that he found that, that he could, you know, give more than just admiration to. And if that's the case, great. Like I, I want him to be happy. I mean, it was obvious it was never going to be me. Like he made that clear and I've moved on from that, but it was a sore subject because I do miss my friend. I miss a lot of my friends from then. And this friend didn't quite catch on that. It's a sore subject because aside from making sure he's okay that one time, I purposefully avoided talking to him. I, I don't want to cause issues. I don't want to, 
cause confrontation with his girlfriend because even if my feelings are not the same as they used to be like years ago, how would you feel? How would you feel if, if this person who was super close to your boyfriend, uh, you know, but then backed off all of a sudden starts talking to him again? Yeah. She'll probably think something, even if it's not true. And I don't want to cause that kind of volatile sort of situation between them because that's the thing too is that it doesn't matter what I feel like it matters what he feels like in his relationship with her and like he's with her like it's I I never understood why she thought that I may have been like a homeworker back then but this friend that I talked on the phone with eventually I was like look I I'm purposely not reaching out to him because I don't want to cause issues. Like, yeah, I miss my friend. I miss talking to him. I miss talking to a lot of my friends from then, but I don't want to, you know, make ways. I don't, I don't want to cause him to be unhappy because his girlfriend's upset because I'm talking to him again. Even if I'm not, even if I don't have any hidden designs or, or intent, like, for me, yeah, I can be friends with people even after, you know, <laughs> it's funny because he and I never dated and, and like was never intimate with me at all. Like he was never like that with me. I have ex-boyfriends who I was definitely in intimate with. Um, but over the years, like we became friends and didn't have any sort of romantic notions for each other. And I, I'm still talking to them. You know, like they're, they're good people. Like they, like aside from the whole like dating aspect of it, those ex-boyfriends, like they were good friends too. And so we maintain friendship. Um, but yeah, I, even if I don't feel the same way about, and like, I don't think his girlfriend would like it very much if I were talking to him regularly because then that might cause issues in the relationship because she would be upset. And if she's upset, then that would cause him angst. And I don't want that. And I know that's making a lot of assumptions considering that I'm not talking to him, that I, I don't know what his feelings would be on the matter or what her feelings would be on the matter. Cause in the other video, I said like, I never reach out to her. I never talked to her. She never reached out to me. Uh, so I don't know her personally, but just based on the reaction she had before, I just, I feel like this would be the best thing is that, yeah, I miss talking to my friend because despite how angry she was at the time when, you know, they started dating and, you know, she didn't like him being friends with me before she ever existed in his life, he and I were super close friends. You can't take that away. That happened, but I can make a conscious effort to not cause issues. And so my friend on the phone, she, um, she eventually got it, but it brought up a lot of sad feelings, not just about N and his girlfriend, like just that whole situation and me being seen as something that I'm not. Um, but just the fact of, I miss talking to some people. I, and I do have some homesickness for California. I mean, I, I couldn't support my family there on my own. I did not have the kind of resources to do that. Um, I did have a really great job and I was getting paid a lot, but not enough to sustain myself and my, my two kids. It's, it's hard being a single parent. Um, and I just, I had to do what was best for my family, but even though I, I told people that I would never live in California ever again, I'm not going to lie. I, I miss people. I miss, I miss California. I do. It's, it's like this love hate relationship with me on the inside because I'm from California. It's, it's my home. It always will be, but I miss, I miss it. And it's just hard to live there. It's hard to support my family, um, there, but 
but I do miss people there, a lot of people. And right after getting off the phone with my friend, I did send a couple messages to other people. Um, I think that's the thing is that it's connections. I miss the connections I had with people. I miss talking to them and, and letting them know everything that's happening in my life. And yeah, people get busy and life happens. I mean, I definitely the product of that being a single mom working full time and struggling with finances and trying to make everything work and, <laughs> and dealing with health issues on top of that. I mean, that hospital scare last year was just, it was scary. Now the vitamins have been doing wonders. So I'm doing much better now, um, even a month later. So I've actually started to be able to exercise a little bit. I'm starting to show the progress and I've even gone down a couple pounds. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, but all that kind of stuff going on and I, I get it like life happens, but even though I'm making the conscious choice not to reach out to N because I, I do fear that there would be some sort of repercussions on him from his girlfriend. Like, you know, what's she going to think? And then that's going to cause him issues. And I really don't want to cause him issues. I don't want to make him unhappy. I want, I want him to be blissful in his relationship with her. And if removing myself, even though I'm not trying to steal him, um, if that'll make it better, then I'll do that. But I do think life is short. I do want to talk to some of the people I miss. So I sent a couple messages and I'll see if maybe they, they message back. I just, I miss people. I do. I think it's also because even though I started this video not crying, during my talk, I cried a little bit because my friend said, how are you handling everything after, after losing your friend last year? So yeah, I'm starting to cry again because just the, the thought of my friend that's no longer here makes me cry. Um, And I just, I think it's important for people to remember that life is short. Anything can happen. So while I'm trying to do what I think is best for someone else in the regards to Anna's girlfriend, I, I am reaching out to some people that I haven't talked to much because I miss them so much. And you never know, right? I'm sorry. I'm trying not to cry. It's... It's really hard. It's really hard sometimes, especially when you just lost someone that wasn't too long ago. Um, and I found out later that my friend passed away on the same day as one of my closest friend's birthdays. <laughs> so well, it's celebrating one of my closest friends since like high school. And then the passing of a close friend that I've had for the past few years that made a huge impact on my life. So you bet I messaged quite a few people. <laughs> I, uh, I definitely wanted them to know that I appreciated them, that I missed them and that I know that life gets in the way, but I miss that connection. I miss just the existence of a connection, just the existence of a friendship. The fact that I could talk to them, you know, when there are so many people I've lost over time that I can't talk to anymore like that. So I'm sorry. I did not intend to cry. <laughs> I had, I thought I was doing a pretty good job. I thought I was doing a pretty good job. Cause I, I really did cry on the, the phone with my friend and then I took a beat and then I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's take a beat and then I'll be fine. And I also don't like crying because <laughs> my eyes look really weird when I cry. Like my, my eyes get super bright and then bloodshot and everything. And then of course my nose gets all red and <laughs> I look really blah. I'm not, I'm not a cute crier. I'm like an ugly crier. I really am. Uh, 
But I think I've made progress in the fact that I'm actually saying this on video. I used to hate people seeing me cry. So I think that's something. My friend would be proud because she she said that she enjoyed my videos. She enjoyed my videos. She enjoyed seeing me express my emotions no matter what it was. She said that that's something you should share. So... Sorry, the whole point of this video was you never know how much time you have. So if you can reach out, God, okay, I'm like, okay, now I can't stop. Now I'm going to have to stop the video because now I can't stop. Like I thought I was doing such a good job and then this happened. So, so yeah, if you, if you know someone and you care about them or if you you want to do things or you want to talk to someone or whatever reach out because you never know what time you have left and yeah I get it that's so contra contrary to me saying that I'm purposely not reaching out to that guy <laughs> but but I, I do I do ask how he's doing through mutual friends so I do I do ask to see how he's doing I just I just am not talking to him directly but but you should you should reach out to people because you don't know anything could happen but um okay I'm gonna start crying a lot more so I'm just gonna stop but um yeah <laughs>